G'day, I'm Ash. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. This is Warfare 1944. And it's not often that a game capsulates my attention uh, just based on visuals alone, but this game really stood out to me and felt like a very classic video game. Granted, this is Warfare 1944, and it is developed by uh, Blue Drake 42 and, and his cohort of fantastic uh, crew. And it will cover basic infantry combat, large-scale environments, and a dynamically challenging objectives that will encourage teamwork and coordination. Uh, and future editions will include new factions, weapons, vehicles, and brutally realistic gameplay mechanics. And can I say, visually, aesthetically, it is a very pleasing video game. For something that's so simple yet so beautiful, it's, it's, it's vibrant. It, the textures remind me of a very 90s styled game. And yet, I feel right at home. The gunplay too also feels fantastic, but I'm currently exploring the shooting range map. There are three other maps available at this current time, but uh, none of the servers were open. As you can see, they've got a bunch of things planned, like destructible buildings. I just thought I'd give it a quick shooter to. Did nothing to it, but that's okay. We've got a Gewehr 43 at the moment. And the reload animation for this thing is fantastic as well. I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a run and have a bit of an explore around, but essentially it is a game that is developed similar to Red Orchestra 2, Forgotten Hope, and Battlefield 1942, and their objective is to retrieve many elements of older games that they miss in modern shooters. And, well, they're, they're doing a fantastic job because this, this the developers were picked up by Micropose, and this being the first game that uh, I'll be covering that uh, comes out from Micropose, it's done a fantastic job. According to the Steam page, Warfare 1944 focuses on tactical gameplay. Bullets are deadly, one shot can kill. Team communication is essential, and Warfare 1944 features robust proximity voice communication, which allows you to communicate with your fellow soldiers alongside you. Again, a feature I have yet to test because uh, at the current time of recording this, literally no one was in any servers, unfortunate for being in an Australian time zone. Regardless, I had fun in the shooting range, nevertheless, we'll probably have to revisit a, a better large-scale mission, or should I say, a match at a later point. Because isn't that the whole point of uh, playing this sort of thing? As you can see, we've got a K98 now, and oh my goodness, the reload animations are just utterly fantastic. The K98 here feels fantastic, really smooth, it sort of has a bit of weight to it, with also being a bit robust. And there is a bit of skill involved in using that particular vehicle. Anyway, we're going to jump into the Cooper Wagon, because there are vehicles in this game. We're going to go for a bit of a test drive, see how much we can push this vehicle to the limit. So you can see it's quite fast. And, well, I, I wasn't expecting there to be vehicles in the game just yet. You look, use Alt to look left and right. Crash into a couple of bushes, because why not? And uh, let's continue down this dirt track here. One of the things I find fantastic about this game, it just, it just fills me with nostalgia. Like a Wolfenstein or a, a GoldenEye kind of game, the lighting is utterly fantastic. It has great realism, but just feels like a 90s game. And you can't continuously bunny hop or shoot. Your character gets tired, the weapons feel fantastic, and of course you can flip vehicles, which... <laughs> Something that I didn't necessarily expect to happen. Granted, we were moving at quite a uh, momentum there. But it's shaping up to be fantastic fun. And with bot support is in the roadmap. The game is supposed to kind of play like Battlefield. But as it develops, it will become its own unique uh, game. And I think that is utterly fantastic. As we've got the Luger here. I, I just love the reload animations. The slide comes back when you uh, fully empty a magazine. And look at that. As someone who actually owns a Luger, or at least used to, that is exactly how it acts in real life. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just fascinating. Of course, there are different types of assault weapons, MP40s. Of course, you can't forget the uh, the good old Thompson as well, and the sidearms that this currently is equipped with. And uh, we pull out the 1911 good old pistol, definitely powerful enough. And the animations on this is utterly fantastic. There's a bit of uh, bullet effect as well, and I just, I, I, there's something about this old aesthetic. I'm going to keep banging on that particular thing. It just feels like a game that should have already existed, but hasn't. I'm going to reload it one more time. As you can see, there is a little bit of object dynamics there with those barrels filled with sand or gravel or what have you spilling out as the bullets hit it. Now, let's go back to the Thompson for a second, and we're going to go floored over this baby. Ready for the reload? Tap, tap. Oh, that anima animation is so satisfying. Let's do it again. 
and it feels really, really superb. Like, it feels like you can control it. The recoil is fantastic. It's got a decent weight to it. Oh, man, that never gets old. I'll be continuously reloading the Thompson if I ever get my hands on it. And, of course, there are a whole host of other different weapons, but, again, early access. So, currently, there are smoke grenades and there are regular grenades. Both factions get them. Germany does. And you can't have a World War II game without having the fantastic ping uh, rifle. There you go. All right, now let's do that again. Man, that is just so satisfying. And let me just paraphrase. This game has so much potential. And this is just currently their alpha. You know, most World War II simulator games that I know of had a really rough sort of launch. And they didn't really get developed for a good couple of years. And Micropose picked up this particular game as, as a publisher. And has been utterly fantastic trying to work with these guys. You've got different logistics pits, and I presume that these will be filled with different vehicles at some point. But what we're interested in here now is the vehicles that are going to be coming to the game. And we'll get out for this and we'll have a look in a second. Uh, but uh, as, as the car continues to roll. Panzer IV, again, there's a work in progress, not currently driving. Uh, you've got the Puma with the 20mm, and you've got the Opel Blitz, which is a German uh, truck. You've got the Deuce and a Half for America. Uh, these two trucks are currently drivable, so I could easily get out and uh, have a bit of a play with them. You've got your British Staghound, and uh, to the right, you also have a Sherman. So there's a Panzer IV, uh, I believe it's a Panzer IV G, and I believe it's a 76 Sherman as well. But again, these will be fully functional vehicles that you'll be able to play, and they'll add a different dynamic to a game like, for example, Hell Let Loose, Postscriptum, Rising Storm, except this one feels a little more accessible in terms of a, uh, a first-person shooter goes. So it'll be interesting to see. Odd choice of a Sherman, though, would have gone with a slightly earlier Sherman, but that's just me. Now, can we get in and drive this one? I kind of want to have a bit of fun with it. Now, <laughs> there is a bit of a bug with this one. As soon as I get out of this vehicle, I'm going to get thrown onto the top of the Opal Blitz. Nothing to be too <laughs> ashamed of. Again, everything is work in progress, but I find that utterly hilarious. Hey, it gives us another detail to appreciate some of these tank models, at least, uh, and also the Willys Jeep there. But uh, the Panzer IV and, and the, 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 the armoured cars and the, the 76 Sherman, utterly fantastic, <laughs> I must say. I'm looking forward to getting my hands on those as uh, someone who plays majority of uh, stuff. But there is also planned for aircraft to come into game at some point in the future. According to their dev blogs, uh, the development blogs uh, from, from from a while ago, there is definitely planned four different uh, U a US Corsair, a Mitsubishi A6M0, a BF-109, etc, etc. So there will be interesting things to have a look at uh, when aircraft comes to this game, which will be another dynamic which a lot of other first-person shooters don't have. Whether they'll be a commander use only, uh, who knows, but uh, it's an interesting thing nonetheless. In terms of infantry kit, you can have a non-commissioned officer, which kit is limited. You have riflemen, your automatic riflemen, your medic, uh, and there will be grenadier, anti-tank riflemen, and specialist. Uh, once the game develops further, there's different capture points you need to capture as well. Uh, there's several if other, uh, ever, uh, different other things as well. There will be a suppression mechanic which will allow you to uh, come to the game to, soon, which will uh, basically so the player's vision will be obstructed slightly. And uh, there's all sorts of other things too ammo and medical bags. Uh, they're working on audio, and they're also working on their other game, which is Operation Harsh Doorstop, which is utterly fantastic. Now, of course, being early access <laughs> and a work in progress, even though it is a fantastic game, I don't know, I, I wasn't quite sure what to do when that vehicle rolled off uh, as I was going for a bit of an explorer of the actual map itself. Regardless, I don't think I'm supposed to be on the water there, <laughs> but we'll have a look anyway. Currently, there is also a plan to have Japanese and Russian factions, and they've been doing a lot of work since May, uh, preparing for the introduction of the Japanese and the Russian uh, we'll likely see the Japanese faction coming first, as they were already getting uh, moving. But, you know, creating assets for the Russian faction will also have a solid base moving forward with creating maps for Western Front, Eastern and Pacific theatres at war, which have compiled a list of the current work-in-progress models for both. So that's utterly fantastic to see. Obviously, it is pretty bare-bones, but from what I'm seeing, it's a very solid tactical shooter. But since it's an early access, there are a lot of things that are still going to be missing. Uh, but of course, it will improve over the course of its development, and I am very much impressed, and I'll be keeping an eye out on this game, uh, potentially for, you know, future content. You know, I, I like getting into different games and, well, showing them to you. 
Here we are, we've got some destroyers in the background here. I don't think I'm supposed to be over here. <laughs> but uh, that is that. So that's Warfare 1944. I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's video. I have no idea what I'm doing, but there, look, a boat. Haha. -ha. An utterly fantastic game. I'll be keeping an eye out on this one on the channel. Anyway, my name is Ash. Thank you much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.